here at the Scanzi House, home of Harbor Wild Watch. And uh, Stina and myself have gone down to the dock and picked out a couple of creatures and we're just gonna show you what's cool about them. Um, and this is a great activity for anybody that you can do. Um, you can't remove them from the water. We have a special permit to do this, but you can easily do what we call belly biology, which is laying flat on the dock with your head over the side and just looking and observing and seeing what's there. Um, we picked out some of the most kind of animals that will pique your interest the most. Uh, what should we start with, Dina? Well, I see some pretty spidery looking critters kind of in the back here, mm -hmm. which uh, make me gonna, curious. You're going to make me reach in. Oh, this. yeah. So do you want to start with dry hands? <laughs> yeah, let's start with uh, And then for those of you tuning in, if you can, I see we have Octavia tuning in from Montana. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions as we go along, we'd love to help answer. How about there's this bright orange thing? What's yeah, what's going on there? It's hard not to notice this bright orange thing. Uh, this is uh, the aptly named orange sea cucumber. And I'm going to flip it so that you can a little more yeah. close view in focus here. Um, so sea cucumbers are relatives of sea stars and they have all the same parts pretty much. They're just organized in a cylinder shape instead of that beautiful star pattern. Um, they have five rows of these tube feet that you can see suction cupping on um, and that's how they grip. This is a filter feeder so although the feeding tentacles are in right now when this animal feels comfortable um, and is hungry, they'll stretch those five uh, kind of feathery feeding plumes out into the water to scoop up whatever plankton they can catch. So I think it's uh, waving at all of you tuning in. So uh... <laughs> it totally is doing a little little wiggle there. Hi from Cake Harbor. Nice to see. Um, yeah, love to see these guys, and they're they're very aptly named the orange sea cucumber. Um, this one has a little bit of mottled coloration on its body, and my guess is. Um, that has a little bit to do with what areas are normally squished up against the dock and not seeing the light of day and other sides of them are more exposed um, and thus more brightly colored, which is super, super cool. Yeah, I, I was really... hoping we would find a sea star to show you, but <laughs> we didn't see any today. Yeah, and then behind it, I see there's some little yeah. feathery floof. You might see better from the top here. This is um, one of my favorite animals, this is a nudibranch, a type of sea slug. And this animal is related to the slugs in your garden, but much more beautiful. Um, it also doesn't eat your beautiful flowers. It eats animals like hydroids and anemones. Um, I brought a hydroid to show you what that looks like. This species in particular, I like to call it the candy cane sea slug, because you'll notice the little <laughs> Or not candy cane, candy corn. Candy corn, there it is. I was like, yeah, the little candy corn tips. Totally. Um, and then those hydroids, Rachel mentioned. Yeah, so this is hydroids and it looks like a, a plant, right? It does, does, looks like a little bit of algae, but this is actually an animal uh, called a hydroid. And they're related to anemones and jellyfish in the Cnidarian phylum. So kind of neat. Yum, yum, yum. Doesn't look very appetizing to me, but then I'm not a slug. I think the nice thing about this sea slug really exemplifies the nudibranch name or naked gills. So, uh, on that back surface, all you can those see serrata. No protection yeah. for this animal. Let me show you the underside of this one. And the digestive tract. You can it looks see like the digestive tract right there. There's breakfast. Yep. Right Lovely. Right and yeah, this is that slimy suction cup foot that you might associate with your garden slug varieties stuck to the glass here. And they creep along, they produce mucus in their foot um, in part so that they can uh, reduce the friction as they're crawling. It's not usually smooth glass like this that they're crawling over, um, but also as a part uh, of a way to kind of track where they've been so they can feel their own mucus and kind of have an idea of where they are. Yeah, and then we also get a little peek here at the mouth. That's kind of cool. Like almost, they do have a radula, which is this modified kind of scrapey tongue. And they're just beautiful. They're they're really a lovely animal to spot there. Very delicate, kind of like touching wet tissue paper or jello. Yes, you can't. You if if you're not looking when you're touching them, you can't even tell. They're they're just as soft as tissue paper. That's a good way to put it. All right, so I'm ready to get my fingers wet. All right, so I'm gonna lift up this cutie right here. Um, this is 
a sharp-nosed decorator crab. Um, and you can see the nice bright pinchers here. That's how I was able to spot this animal was it was hanging underneath the dockside and I just caught a glimpse of those tiny pinchers which gave away that this is truly a crab and not just a clump of dock. <laughs> um, they do uh, put different animals and algae on top of their body. I can see the orange right here is a colonial tunicate. There's some breadcrumb sponge on the side and even what looks like maybe some bryozoans, that kind of orangey color there hard to tell uh, close up. But this animal's carapace is covered in little Velcro-like hooks. So um, all the animal has to do is take a, a little pinch off of whatever is in their environment and stick it to their back and those little tiny hooks will hold on to it. And then because most everything that's on this crab is growing, they're just gonna grow right there in place. So the sponges that you see here are just gonna continue to grow and further hide this animal. Great camouflage. Really uh, impressive master of disguise there. You can really see some of those bristles on its legs. And then, oh, who is it running into in this little tank? Yeah, the other critter in here. This one is a, a little bit more difficult to hold. I'll kind of keep him down here in the water so that he doesn't panic. But we've got a species of shrimp here. Um, the shrimp has all the same body parts that a crab does. They're just arranged a little bit differently. So they do have pinchers. They're pretty small up in the front here, teeny tiny. Um, they have antenna, which in the crab is very small, Ooh, very <laughs> small. And in shrimp is quite long. They also have a secondary set of antennas right up at the top there. Um, it might be easier to see from the side here. I um, love so those, those little, little swimming legs. Yep. <laughs> and then in the back, these are called swimmerettes, which help them to kind of propel themselves upwardly in the water. Super nice. Excellent. They generally have a sharp rostrum or a, like a little nose that sticks out forward and it's got little barbs on it uh, to help make them not so delicious for eating. And for all of you tuning in, I'm certain it just winked at you, so. <laughs> the eyes are on little tiny stalks. Um, so they have that in common with crabs as well. And then they do have a hard shell, just like our decorator crab and all crustaceans. So when this animal grows, it needs to molt and shed that. And so sometimes we will see that um, when we're dockside, we'll see those molts. And it just looks like a little clear ghost of a shrimp with all the features and everything. Nice. Thank you get settled back <laughs> next to your happy little algae clump. I, you can see there. They're not used to being in a, a glass yeah, surface smooth, container. They're like, what is happening? Is uh, and for old, anyone who's wondering, they're all gonna be put back where we found them uh, after this program. So uh, no worries there. <laughs> all right, and then in our big tank. Now we're ready to really get our hands wet. Really get our hands wet. Get our hands so, wet. Uh, Excellent. We've got in here two of my favorite crab species. Well, one of my favorite crab species, two individuals. Um, but first let me show you this cool algae. Uh, this is this beautiful filamentous algae. It's uh, really growing well this time of year. Um, and let me find the base of it. I can lift it up and show you what it looks like out of the water is quite different. So it turns to nothing. Um, and then in the water is this beautiful kind of pretty. I'm gonna actually set it aside so I can see my crab species <laughs> a little better. Yeah, there, um, just do a little so pretty, look right? at some of those fronds, yeah. And this is doing photosynthesis out there. There's a lot of animals that will be consuming this algae. As we get more daylight, uh, we get more productivity with our producers like this algae, and then everything else eats that. So, awesome. Aha! Uh -huh. Let's talk about. Ooh, hey now, hey now. <laughs> the crabby crabs are this next is, on our. This is why you should have a certified crab wrangler like myself <laughs> to do this. So we're, what, did you see that? He really took a swipe at me. Um, so this is one of the most flexible crab species, which is one that we don't recommend that people handle as like your first crab, um, because they're able to grab uh, much farther back on their body. So most crabs, if you just hold them like a sandwich, you're gonna be just fine. You're out of the way of those big pinchers. But for this one, you can see they can reach right behind them. Same is true for that decorator crab, um, which both of these get called spider crabs, which is more of a shape description 
than it is a species. So the small body and really long limbs compared to the normal like cancer crab that you're used to eating uh, in a restaurant are kind of the two main crab shapes that we have here in the Salish Sea. And this one right here I can tell is a male and I can tell it right off the bat by these big, big pinchers. Um, they also, the males tend to be more red overall. And then if we look at that abdominal flap right here, so on our shrimp, their abdomen goes backwards behind their head um, where the swimmerettes are located. On the crab, it's reduced and flattened and folded up underneath. They also have a rostrum like our shrimp, so they have this kind of nose to them, whereas like the Dungeness and Red Rock crabs... He's picking its me, nose. Don't, don't pick your nose, sir. <laughs> You're on camera. Uh, <laughs> I love it. There's two tiny little antennas right up there. And then if... Um, cooperates maybe he'll move his mouth a little bit for us um, and we can see the different mouth parts that are there <laughs> he's determined to pinch me um, so they the crabs have to use their pinchers in order to break food down into small enough pieces that these little tiny jaw-like areas can um, can process them so they have a number of them some of them go sideways some go kind of up and down um, I think chelicera is the yeah. common name for all crustacean or all, I guess, yes, arthropods. Yeah, and then the, the health part outside, pedipalp, chelicerae, pedipalps. Yep. A bunch Those of different all, names all for all the little parts of the common mouth. Common to spiders and uh, insects and crustaceans like this crab. Totally. So this little crab has a much more difficult life ahead of it. It's lost both of its pinchers. Oh. It's not quite as old as this one. Um, and both of these are juveniles. They don't get maybe about six inches max across the back of the carapace, so pretty big. Um, but this animal can survive as long as um, it can get to food. And luckily here in the Pacific Northwest, and this actually, there's tons of food around. There's a primarily um, herbivore species when the kelp is abundant, um, but they're opportunists. They'll take advantage of whatever food that they can find. So if it's, uh, you know, something to scavenge, like if something dead, they'll definitely eat that. Um, they will catch small things like we had to be careful when we were collecting to make sure our crabs didn't eat that slug that was there. Um, but this animal can survive. Um, there's plenty of food out there. And then the next time it molts and sheds its outer skin, it will have two tiny little baby pinchers. And then the next molt after that, they'll be a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And finally, um, if it can reach adulthood, it'll regrow those pinchers entirely. Um, occasionally we'll find crabs that have lost maybe one or the, the pinchers are disproportionate. And that usually means they've had, had a rough go of it, um, but have survived. Our uh, friend David Littlebird is wondering what species of shrimp tastes the best? I don't know. I don't eat shellfish. It feels like eating my coworkers. Like I, I teach people about these creatures, so it feels weird to eat them. Uh, <laughs> I do know. I know. It would like be a lot of work eating something like this kelp crab because all the meats in the legs, these and are so little skinny little legs. Little muscles in there. Yeah. Yeah, you're safe from us, friend. Um, and being out of the water like this is no problem for these crab species. They are um, found intertidally, which means they have adaptations that help them to survive when the tide leaves them high and dry. Um, and as long as they're kept cool and moist, they're going to be just fine. So we can kind of give them a little dunk, a little breather, <laughs> oh. and it'll be just fine there. Uh, the temperature is one of the main things that we want to watch out for. If they get too hot, that's more dangerous to them than being just dry can maintain a little bit of moisture within their hard shell um, and get by just fine. I like to, since we have a nice hold on it, the see if we can get a close-up of those hypodermic needle-like toes. Oh, they are so sharp. So sharp. Oh, there you go. We just poking me. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the back one. Yeah, Ouch. a lot of times when we're, yeah, we, we don't teach children how to wrangle these crabs, but no. <laughs> um, when we are teaching our crab wrangling, often kids will say, ah, I got bit. And you, again, no. can look at those mouthpieces. They're not very Not strong, likely for not biting. Sharp. And then if the pincher's not, you know, latched onto the child, uh, usually it's the pokey toes that's pokey toes. surprising you. What's, uh, we need to figure out what Latin is for pokey toes and then oh my gosh. propose this propose as their the scientific pokey. <laughs> Right now their scientific name is uh, Pugetia productus um, because this is a prolific crab. It can, um, they can, most crabs can only reproduce when their shells are soft and they're in their molting stage, but this is one crab that can mate all year round regardless of whether the females are ready to molt or not. So um, 
we quite often when we find females, they're gravid, meaning they've got a big abdomen full of eggs. Little babies. Little babies. Well, great. Well, that's all the creatures we have to show off today. Um, is there one you want to talk any more about, Rachel? Um, I said all the things. You said all the things. <laughs> Uh, and I think what's fun is, you know, when we're doing belly biology like this, Rachel mentioned, you know, leaning on the dock, looking into the water, um, a fun thing for anyone to come and do on, especially on a beautiful day like today, <laughs> but just making some observations and watching and wondering, uh, if you have any questions, taking pictures and sending them our way, we love, uh, answering creature questions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just go out and make some Make, do some noticing. Yeah, and for the parents who might be worried about the safety of your kids on the dock, this public dock does have life vests that you can borrow. So I recommend borrow a life, jack, uh, life jacket, uh, make sure it's cinched up. And then for uh, kids who are looking over the edge, if you're on the dock fully on your belly, it's really hard to fall in. Yes. So it's Patented uh, belly biology techniques. You heard it here. <laughs> um, yeah, come on down to the beautiful Jurassic Dock. Uh, try your hand at making some observations. Maybe tell somebody if you see some of the creatures and you uh, want to share what you've learned about them uh, because that's how we're going to protect and conserve this amazing habitat. Is the more people that know about it, the more they can care about it, and the more that we can protect this beautiful place. Yes, and a big shout out for all the science from the Scanzi House coming to you digitally. Uh, we want to thank the Gig Harbor Lodging tax, Lodging tax Advisory Committee. Uh, so big shout out to them <laughs> for their support in us bringing you programs digitally from the lovely Scanzi house. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of like getting out of the pool and just having like my sad high. wet hair. Yeah, when you're underwater, you feel like this beautiful mermaid and then you come out and it's <laughs> yep, just like that. <laughs> All right, and for all of you who tuned in, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and as always, learn, have fun. <laughs>